Our next speaker is Francisco Fernandez Lafuente. He's CEO of Center Engineering and Systems. He, has op he operates from San Francisco and manages the company and participates in the business development and bidding process of the US, Canada, and especially in the structuring of EPC and private, public-private partnerships. He developed his skills for more than 15 years as former deputy CEO of IRIDIUM, the ACS Group Infrastructure Concessions Company, where he also served as vice president for business development. And during these years, he participated in the bidding, contracting, construction, and operation of more than 40 infrastructure projects and an investment of more than 20 billion euros. And he was also in charge of what we're calling the uh, French Connection, which is the new connection between France and Spain, where they um, are now, you can now take a train from Paris to Madrid. So please welcome Francisco Fernandez de Fuente. Good morning. Thank you for having me here again. I'm glad to try to bring some uh, ideas from uh, elsewhere. I won't uh, tell and talk about uh, the Spanish model. If I could characterize the Spanish model, I would say that it is, uh, in terms of uh, high-speed rail, I would say that it is a very open um, system in terms of uh, uh, being able and capable to add any kind of technology related with high-speed rail. That's the m main characteristic of the so-called Spanish model, which, uh, by the way, is the, Spain is the second uh, country in the world in terms of uh, uh, miles, uh, total miles of uh, high-speed network under operation after China. But what I would like to talk today is uh, about uh, procurement uh, kind of approaches. I will take uh, profit of some of the things that were uh, discussed already. Uh, Jeff Morales uh, told us that uh, along the Central Valley, the California High Speed Rail Authority has been working under a design build kind of uh, procurement processes. And he also told us that uh, after the cap and trade uh, funding system is approved, there is a new uh, funding capability that opens this procurement process to other kind of uh, possibilities. And that's what I'm trying to talk about today. And uh, talking about procurement, I think it's important to first uh, talk about uh, uh, what kind of players are involved in this uh, procurement process. And of course, there is going to be public agencies, but also uh, private private companies. Some of the privates can act as providers, contractors, or some of them can even um, play a role as investor and in trying to help in developing the high-speed rail um, project under an investment uh, model. Uh, so, uh, what kind of uh, private investor are going to look at these kind of projects we can ask for? I would say a private investor will take, of course, care about uh, the risks involved, involved in each project. So, the private investment groups that are going to look at these projects are the ones that are, are able to manage and take care about the, pro the kind of risks involved. Those are civil contractors because uh, construction, civil construction is probably the, the, the biggest risk on uh, any infrastructure construction, any transportation construction. Second risk might be related with, uh, especially in rail, in rail uh, infrastructure, <coughs> might be the systems involved uh, or related kind of risk. Uh, because uh, with rail, you don't have only the civil infrastructure, you will have the trains that we heard, but everything, every gear that makes the trains run on the tracks. And those uh, systems are especially sensitive and complex for high-speed rail, and the uh, integration, testing, and commissioning of these kind of systems is probably the second risk on the road. Rolling stock 
as we heard today, is a very mature market. And probably the performance of rolling stock is not anymore a big risk. There are very good rolling stock providers, well known around the world, that are uh, in place. Another staff is uh, accomplishing about uh, things like uh, Buy American. But this is not a risk, this is a regulation. So, uh, final, and another important risk on these uh, venues is uh, how to get revenues in order to repay the investment. And of course, these revenues will depend on the, how uh, mm, big will be the volume of revenues required in order to compensate the investment. There are several ways of mitigating this kind of risk, as we will say afterwards. And finally, there is the, 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 the final goal of all this uh, effort, which is uh, transport people from one point to the other, and doing this on a safe basis through a <coughs> sounded operation and maintenance uh, practice, which in fact is already is also uh, quite a used and well-known um, procedures, and there is no much risk really involved in that. Uh, there is uh, also uh, a way of uh, renewing contracts and the procedures along the lifetime of the project. So, uh, just uh, coming back to coming again to this uh, picture, we will see here the same. Sorry uh, about that. I was trying to, yeah, here it is. This is the civil contractors, this is the uh, system integrators, this is rolling stock providers, this is the operators. And they can play different roles. Normally, uh, civil contractors will play a role of design build, within design build, but they might also, and there are a lot of examples of big civil war contractors that pl they play the role as investor, and even as a concessioner, being involved in the operation. On the system row, there are uh, system companies that are involved as the design build contractors, but seldom as investors, probably because of the size of the investment itself and the size of the companies relative to others. On the rolling stock side, there is uh, rolling stock uh, providers that are uh, <coughs> quite, quite used to in, in, invest uh, uh, as a rolling stock provider even in design build teams, and sometimes in, uh, in, as investor, but merely dedicated to the maintenance uh, portion of the long life uh, cycle of the projects. And finally, are the operators, which uh, they take care about uh, revenues and are at the end of the, of the process, and they might play a role as investor, but seldom too, because the, their business doesn't uh, make so much, let's say, so much money to justify initial investment. If we talk about how to deal with all, with these, let's say, four type of players together, uh, you, can, you can take this role on, then you get a design build, maybe a design build plus concessioner, uh, at this row, you will find only infra um, developers, infrastructure, de infrastructure developments that might go up to a DB of M if you join with the second one. And if you join all of them, you get uh, uh, with the operation, you get an operation conces concession uh, integrating vertically all the, these uh, players. The criteria that uh, these investors are used to, to, to take into account are, of course, the long-term political support, again, the risk allocation, which is uh, the main uh, important issue to take decisions between uh, the division of roles among public and private side. And at that, that, that uh, area, I, want to I would like to stress, the, again, the importance of construction <laughs> risk, including not just pure construction, but also right-of-way availability, uh, final um, environmental issues that can appear, like a certain material that were not known, geological risk, depending on the, the kind of uh, information that the constructor has at the point of uh, bidding and putting in place a price, a price. 
Also the traffic risk, which is uh, uh, probably more better handled by a, a mine um, driven by concessionaire and operators. And also the financial close uh, related risk, which are mainly uh, related to uh, interest costs, things like that. At the end, this uh, criteria will lead the different players to organize themselves on a package and integrating a group of the different uh, areas in which we have characterized these projects. But one of the criteria, important criteria for investors to take a decision to enter in these kind of uh, projects might be the volume of the investment. And nowadays, uh, the maximum volume we might see in the market for infrastructure projects would be around six to eight billion projects, no more, uh, million dollars, no more than that. Uh, these, uh, normally, these uh, projects are going to be developed on a um, distribution of 20% equity, 20 to 30% equity, and the rest debt, and there is no way to to uh, put a package of uh, uh, debt higher th than the appropriate to serve a project of uh, six to eight billion dollars, as I mentioned. But of course, another final criteria for in in interested investors to deal with this project is the kind of procuring process that uh, will be put in place. This. Uh, package procurement might be uh, divided in this, again, these different units, civil, track, system, drawing talk, operation and maintenance. Uh, if we are talking about design build, uh, civil work contractors, we can talk about civil on one side, even sometimes we, we, we see projects in with civil and track, which are linear um, developments that are together. Systems usually come on a different layer, but systems are sometimes um, united with uh, rolling stock uh, procurement. So there is sometimes you, you may find a procurement process in which systems and rolling stock are uh, jointly procured. And finally, might be the operation and maintenance, which can be alone or can be also integrated with rolling stock, which also makes sense, the operator to uh, operate and maintain the rolling stock that they are using. They might also uh, operate and maintain the systems, which is also quite, quite make a lot of sense. And seldom, they might also take care about the operation and maintenance of uh, track and civil infrastructure. In that case, we came again to the uh, complete vertically integrated uh, approach where the important thing is to avoid interface uh, risk to the public agency because this contractor will take all the interfaces risk among all these different areas. So, the, the concession model or the design, build, finance, and operate and maintenance model can mm, integrate uh, just to superstructure or even to infrastructure. Let me mm, talk a little bit about the typical flow of money within this kind of projects where you have maybe one or two companies, private companies, one uh, offering the infrastructure, let's call it the infrastructure company, one doing the operation, maybe with rolling stock and maintenance or not, or maybe just a complete uh, uh, concessionaire taking care about all of this. Uh, the public agency uh, might be offering uh, some payments for construction. Those payments for construction are used to be organized through what is called availability payment, which is uh, if the infrastructure, including systems, is available, the company, infrastructure company, will be paid through these infra availability payments along the years. Uh, if there is no the expected availability, then they will get some penalties. But 
Th there is another way that might be combined or not, which is to pay not only on availability basis terms, but also during construction, uh, after some milestones have been uh, accomplished. Uh, this, um, this company will also take uh, um, revenues coming from, uh, first of all, from fur revenues from the passengers and maybe for non-fair revenues. Non-fair revenues are, we can uh, characterize them as uh, commercial concessions in stations, real estate development that might be integrated into the uh, funding of the, of the infrastructure development, the use of the right-of-way of the rail for other uses, for other utilities that might be interested in paying uh, user charge, and uh, maybe others. Uh, if there is a division between these companies, which is quite common in many countries, normally the operator, operation company will also pay to the infrastructure company an infrastructure usage fee, fee uh, for using the infrastructure and uh, normally uh, covering some maintenance cost. Uh, if uh, there is, uh, um, let's say, uh, that, that is seldom happening, but sometimes, and in some theoretical models, the public agency might own the, 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 the rolling stock, the trains. In that case, the operator will pay to the uh, public agency some train leases. At the end, uh, if, uh, if there is enough uh, cash going on in, within this uh, um, circle, some money can even come back to the public agency as a final um, result along the years once the, let's say, the um, return of this company has been achieved. This is called in the, in the, the financial uh, uh, models that uh, rule this uh, operation, it's called the re redistribution of exceeding uh, revenues coming into the deal. Well, I will uh, just try to uh, finish with, uh, um, I already explained those revenue ro uh, sources and I want just to uh, explain that uh, most of these uh, experiences are developed in this um, UIC, which is the Union International Chemin de Fer, the UIC is the International Railway Association, which has uh, prepared a couple of handbooks uh, for high-speed rail development, uh, one of them uh, upgrading existing rails, which uh, <laughs> existing infrastructure, which is quite common in Europe, in some other countries, and uh, other which is implementing uh, specific um, uh, high-speed rail new lines. And you will find in these uh, documents a lot of uh, these experiences that have been developed along uh, the different countries uh, in which uh, SNR has been helping to develop this, uh, this uh, handbook. So with this I, I, I would uh, say thank you and I will be ready for questions uh, afterwards. Thanks.